Welcome to the LA Asia Pacific Film Festival produced by Visual Communications. My name is Kirby Peña Fiel. I'm a programmer and I'm zooming in from currently at San Francisco, California. Uh, thank you to all of our partners who made the 36th annual LA Asia Pacific Film Festival possible, specifically to the Academy of Motion Arts and Sciences, Sony Pictures Entertainment, Comcast, NBC Universal, California Arts Council, SAG-AFTRA, Producers Industry Advancement and Corporation Fund, and the National Endowment for the Arts, and also HBO and Warner Media. And also we'd like to thank our community partners who helped promote the festival. You can check out the list on our website at festival.dcmedia.org. And that said, let's start up our conversation. Please welcome the writer and producer of Death of Nintendo and his two cast members. Please introduce yourselves. Hi everyone, I'm Valerie Castillo-Martinez. I'm the writer and producer of Death of Nintendo. I am Agot Isidro. I'm in uh, Basi, Metro Manila, Philippines right now. And I play the mom of the lead of Death of Nintendo. <laughs> Hi, I'm Noel Comia Jr. I'm in the Philippines. I'm in Makati City right now and I play Paolo in Death of Nintendo. Thank you very much, everybody. Personally, I'm from Paranaque myself, so it's a little, feels like a nice homecoming here. So, um, First and foremost, uh, Valerie, I just have to ask, a coming of age story involving circumcisions and an active volcano. How does one come up with a story like that? Yeah. <laughs> oh, um, Kirby, I'm actually also, I grew up in Paranaque too, so nice. maybe we... <laughs> cross paths at some point when we were kids in the 90s. I don't know. <laughs> um, yeah, volcanoes um, and circumcision. Uh, yeah, interesting mix. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I think the reason why I wanted to write something was because one of my most vivid memories of growing up was in 91 when the volcano erupted um, in Mount Pinatubo in 91. And I was about, I don't know, seven or eight. And I just remember, you know, I was in Manila, but when I opened up um, the window or went outside my house, the ash fall was so thick. And I honestly thought, you know, um, I was seeing snow for the first time. And that kind of vision just stuck in my mind. You know, I only knew snow from watching like Home Alone, you know, like these movies <laughs> in Hollywood. and dreamed what it would feel and, and be, you know, what it would be like to, to see that. And, and, you know, the circumcision part of that was just, you know, I was such a tomboy um, growing up, running around with my brother and his friends. So, you know, maybe you can sense that it's me, very <laughs> biographical too. Um, I identify with that girl in that movie very much. And so, yeah, that's basically what inspired me to kind of pay homage to my childhood, my home, you know, before I eventually moved to the U.S. Mm. Um, one thing I want to ask, too, is like, how did you pair up with uh, Raya and the cast to make this film? Like, how did that process happen? Yeah, um, so Raya and I grew up in the same neighborhood. He's also from Paranaque, and then we also went to the same um, elementary school for 12 years, and he's a year below me. Oh, and I, have to ask, I have to ask. Where are you guys from in Paranaque? I just have to ask. Yeah. To ask. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, um, so I, yeah, so even the sign and like the movie, we just yeah, kind yeah, of. Yeah, because I'm from uh, Green Heights, which is between Lopez and the uh, DF, so it's oh, all familiar cool. to me. <laughs> Phase three. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. Yeah. Great. So they have like a great Esau spot over there that I would go, <laughs> go to. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, the, you know, it, it's kind of like this kind of authentic memory that we both shared. And I think it's just uh, serendipity that brought us into, you know, our, even if we kind of separated, I went to the States, he stayed in the Philippines and became this kind of auteur. And, you know, we, we, we shared very, you know, personal and, and, and very authentic memories of growing up in that specific world that you saw in the film. So we tried to recreate as much of that as possible. So that's, the, and then, so we, re, we reconnected and then um, after grad school, I just kind of reached out, I wrote the script, you know, didn't really think anything would come out of it but attached him and then, you know, 
the rest was history. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Um, and also one thing I wanted to ask too is like for you and the, and the cast members that we have here today is like how impressionable were the late 80s and 90s pop culture with the prior making of this film? Because when I saw this movie, I was just like, this is me. This is me. This is literally me from blowing the cartridge, having the, the old school family computer here. <laughs> um, it just like, I just felt like me and so many like little nuances, um, especially with... Um, like I grew up with my cousins, so I understood like the camaraderie with a bunch of like boys and stuff. And then we sometimes would hang out with like our, our girl cousins. So it's like, I understood that. And so many of these like Filipino nuances I really understood. So how important was it like late eighties, nineties, early nineties, like Japan pop cool. How did that influence you guys growing up? And for you, Noel, since I'm assuming you're a little younger than all of us here, um, What's your impression yes. of that era for you in regarding to like you know, doing your part for this film? Well, I'm, I'm gonna answer first. Oh. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, for me, because uh, like you said, I really grew up in the 80s. I was born <laughs> in 2004, so uh, I wasn't really familiar with the environment back then. But um, uh, I've seen some videos, some stories, and some memes about the the past. And uh, how they how they used to live, like um, like uh, the blowing of the cartridge, things like that, and how um, how important it was to meet physically back then, like uh, the bond of the people were so strong back then, and that it's it's different uh, today because like we're we're all online, we, we use the social media often, and we rarely meet up in person. So uh, I think that that's what was really special back in the 80s where like it was really physical you know uh, yeah Abba, do you want to say something <laughs> <laughs> well i lived through it <laughs> so everything everything i saw there i experienced even during filming you know i was picking up all these prod uh production stuff right i was like oh my god this is just a throwback and uh, so it's a nice revisit to like a life I once had. <laughs> Even the music that they were playing during the shooting, like our, our, our assistant director would really just play throwback music. So it was, and even the, the house that we were in, it was really very the 80s, 90s look. So I was really transported uh, to, to, to that age. And um, it was a good, it was a good memory. I really enjoyed my 80s and my 90s. And, uh, you know, it's just so much fun just seeing it relive uh, on, on the screen and having the younger kids experience that too. That, you know, people just visit houses and then call these, you know, their friends over or, or they get together somewhere. It's just that personal connection, like, like what Noel was saying, you know. Uh, you really hang out personally, person to person, and you travel from one place to another. That is just so much fun. Yeah, and I just wanted to give a shout out to our production design team. We had like a really, they had really strong attention to detail. Wami, Alcazarin, and Tessa Tang were our production designers. And they, you know, we spent, we had so much fun just kind of researching like, oh, is this the right Nike pump or the right, you know um toys or you know how many clips should we have on this person's hair you know it, it was really fun kind of like going through the details with them and i think it really elevated the the film um but as far as the relevance of the 80s and the 90s you know um noel and agud was talking about the the sense of community that the people had back then and i i really hope that even if we shifted into a more you know, we evolved with technology and, 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 you know, some of the values also changed. I hope we did progress, you know, <laughs> looking now into to, to what we have, because there are, it wasn't a perfect decade or 80s and 90s. They weren't perfect either, you know. In the film, it's very obvious that we were commenting on, you know, the, the elements that we got from, you know, our Western colonial mm -hmm. mentality that, you know, the same kind of ideas that, there, yeah, there was still misogyny. There was still sexism, racism. Um, there were all these problems too. So it wasn't like a perfect, you know. We mm -hmm. let's just go back there because it's some, such a such a better time. I think as as the, the years have gone by, I think we learned, you know, 
things to help us grow, not just, you know, as a nation, like not just as Filipinos, but like globally, you know? Yes. So. Um, firstly, I thought the use of the Inner Circle Sweat song, <laughs> oh my God, that, that literally took me back. So that was a, that was a personal joy for me. And um, touching on the on the the eighties and nineties of culture in the Philippines, one thing I really do want to touch upon is like, I really love that each of the kids in the movie was raised by a single mom. I really thought that was like, ah, uh, that was great. Um, I I I had uh, divorced parents when I grew up, so I understood the single parent mentality. And um, can you talk about your process of writing that and like, and, and yeah, like despite like having a single parents. For the most part, the boys in the movie, and specifically Nimao, they grew up to be decent, you know, respectful, for the most part, you know, good kids. So can you talk about your writing process for that? Um, yeah, I actually never realized it while writing it all the way to, you know, editing and post-process and until we premiered um, in Berlin. And then I was asked that question by an audience member. And I never, it never occurred to me that oh, I was wow. writing it that way because it was like, I was raised by a single mother. Like, of course, like that's, how would you write something that's not authentic to you? And I don't see it as a, it's not a criticism to, oh. um, to people, you know, you know, oh, I was abandoned, blah, blah, blah. It wasn't like that. I actually have a quite a good relationship with my dad, but um, it's, it's more of like, it's not that I was, uh, part of a broken family. It was more of like, I was just raised by really strong women, like my mom and my grandmother. Mm. Um, and yeah, and then the, and the same year that the film wrapped, my grandmother passed away. So it's kind of like a, like an homage to her too, you know, to kind of uh, honor her memory. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, yeah, there are some taboos around in the Philippines having, you know, seeing this kind of like, um, ideal family is a nuclear unit. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, I, I, I just don't see it that way. I just think uh, it's an opportunity for kids to be more resilient. It's an opportunity for kids to be more mature and, you know. Um, yeah, I, I love it. I love the way I was raised and hopefully I'm not, I turned oh, out okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, from what we saw in that movie, clearly the boys needed me now. No. Oh yeah. <laughs> they definitely oh, needed her. Sure. They definitely needed her. Um, one thing I wanted to ask too, Agot, like, um, well, how did you feel to play uh, a single mom, a really just strict single mom, especially in that time of era in the Philippines? Uh, my mom was strict, so I was oh. kind of channeling my <laughs> inner mom <laughs> to that role. I mean, not not as religious, but uh, during mm -hmm. that time, yeah, things were just much stricter, I guess, if you're a parent you to the kid now you see you know more new age kind of like uh, uh raising their kids but during that time and my time yeah i was raised by uh very very strict parents but i had both parents but my mom pretty much particularly very strict stricter than, than my dad so it wasn't hard <laughs> i was yeah i was just channeling my inner mom <laughs> through that character um I was the first child, so, and I'm a boy, so I was given a little more freedom compared to my younger sister, who's definitely <laughs> been a little more protected, <laughs> and understandably so, so, um, so that's, um, and also now I wanted to ask uh, Noel for you, like, what are the challenges for you, like, you know, making this period piece, because obviously, as we stated earlier, you weren't born in this era, besides, like, looking up memes and stuff, like, uh, what was probably your biggest challenge of trying to like, you know, get in the right feel of a character raised in this kind of night of this era in the Philippines? Well, given that it, I wasn't really born mm -hmm. in the 1980s, like you said, uh, it was it was sort of difficult to find my place uh, in my character, you know, uh, how to... Uh, I didn't really share much experiences with uh, uh, with Paolo, my character in the story. So uh, I just mostly referred to uh, the script that was written and just uh, researched on uh, the stuff. I asked my parents about some of the other stuff that I wasn't sure about. So uh, you know, I could I could get to know more about their um, their time <laughs> and um, just. 
having fun, you know, because uh, for me, the, in my opinion, the 1980s was fun for Paolo at least. So uh, that's just what I did. I had fun in uh, the set and I had fun with my character. Um, also, uh, Valerie, I wanted to ask is like, did you have the cast members, specifically the kids, did you have them like hang out prior to filmmaking? Because their rapport in the film or it's almost familial. So, uh, so how did that, like how did their closeness come upon like from script to screen for you? Like how yeah, did that? Um, yeah, it was, um, it was the casting kind of came together a little quickly. Um, so, and we were going back and forth between, you know, she would go with uh, theater actors, non-actors, some studio actors. And what we ended up was kind of a mixed bag of everyone from having all different types of experiences. And so Raya made sure that, you know, that they underwent like a workshop together, like an acting workshop yeah. together. So they actually had the chance to hang out and not just dwell so much on the script, but just like mm -hmm. actually become friends. So um, we actually asked them to shred a lot of, or shed, sorry, shed a lot of their, you know, the techniques or, or, or mm -hmm. you know, the tr traditional things that they were, they have been taught in acting because they did have different techniques. I and see. so, so we just wanted them to just uh, be themselves as much as they can. Um, and then our kind of wild card was was finding Nemo because she came in um, one of, yeah she was one of the last people that we cast and we had our minds set for this other theater actress you know who who kind of fit the part and we got this kind of like very scrappy video from her uh, <laughs> and we're like what is this video and. <laughs> And then, you know, and she, she, she just, we had our production meeting, we, we kind of ignored it. And then she showed up to uh, one of our pre-production meetings and just, you know, like, just, just see her, just meet her, said the casting director. And so we met her and she, she just, we just kind of fell in love with her and we we're just like, okay, yeah, you're going to be me well. <laughs> so, yeah. And then they ended up hanging out even after shooting and, you know, like, they hang out, they go to movies, they're like buddies now on, on social media. So it's really cool to see them all hang out and become real friends. That's good. Um, oh, uh, Valerie, also one thing I wanted to ask you is like, um, is, would this be your first uh, writer written script or feature? Yes, it would yeah. be. Yeah, okay. it's my uh, first um, feature length yeah, writing as a writer, and then my first as a lead producer. I mean, I, okay. I also have, um, we're partnered with ABS CBN Black Sheep. And, mm, that's right. Yep, and they are very, you know, supportive and, and kind enough to <laughs> help us out, make this film a reality. Um, but yeah, I mean, on the US component of it, it was, <laughs> It was a challenge. I mean, I know you were asked earlier about challenges and, it, you know, it, it, it's a huge challenge for me to navigate the space as a first time writer, producer, mm -hmm. you know, navigating the space of where, like, where do I even find financing for something like this? It's a foreign language film. Mm -hmm. um, I'm kind of a nobody. I'm like a person of color. Like, who, who is this girl? Yeah. So, so it, it's very, it's, it's quite challenging. Um, and then even, you know, even after the film is made and after it's shot and then we get COVID and then how do you even market that as, you know, to the world, you know, and, and, and say that, you know, it's, a, it's not just a Filipino film. It's actually a Genesis story of an Asian American girl, you know, mm -hmm. and so, so it's, it's hard. So it's, it's really gratifying to see it um, be selected and, festivals like yours and you know it, it's it's great because it's it's finally getting recognized that you know it's it's so much more than you know than what you see kind of in the, on the surface because uh, when i first saw your name with the the film i was like oh the name sounds familiar and then i remember 2017 i think you produced a film a short film called priya 
Right. And I remember right. me, me and the other programmers, specifically Seal, we were fighting over that film to get in our program because we oh, really, really, really enjoyed that film. So it's kind of a nice, I guess, uh, homecoming that you're coming. <laughs> your, your film is in this film festival. Hopefully oh, it wasn't yeah. a big day. So um, what was, uh, how does it feel to be like, I guess, back in like in the folds of like the LA Asian Pacific Film Festival? Like, you know, like you, you, we saw your short film and now you have a feature and like, I think we're literally the first two films that are like, this is the second interview, I think, for like the film festival. So you're front and center for the most part. So how does it feel to be back, like, I guess in the realm of BC with us so, and the film festival, our film festival at least, yeah. Yeah, it, it's really incredible. I mean, you know, uh, for Priya, I, I give a lot of credit to Yudo too, who's also mm -hmm. an, uh, an yeah. Asian American, you know, mm -hmm. filmmaker and, you know, also very talented. And then, and actually last year, uh, I had another film called Manila is Full of Men Named Boy. Oh, that's right. Manila with Manila. another collaborator, Stephen right. Lee. Yeah. And, and the three of us, you know, just went to grad school together, kind of like, oh, you know, okay. being like a bunch of, you know, nobodies. <laughs> and, and, and yeah, it's, it's really great to see the growth in, in, in well, in the friendship and also the the projects and and their trajectories, their own trajectories as filmmakers, and then of course Raya, um, who has been doing a lot of great work already. Um, I feel like in a way that he also opened a door for me in in a way, um, and yeah, and then again like um, grateful to Agut and Noel for also allowing you know me or you know like who is this person making this film and and, and just yeah being open-hearted to to be a part of something like this um i got i wanted to ask you a question um you did you mentioned earlier that you somewhat channeled your mom in like playing the role of the mom in this film um is there something uh that you wanted to like really be within the realm of the script was there like um a nuance of the mom that you wanted to like uh bring out that probably you know, that probably people that nowadays won't understand about the mom in the 90s? Uh, just that they're, they're, house, they're housewives, they're homemakers. Uh, not a lot of moms nowadays are, you know, stay, stay home kind of like mom. Mm -hmm. They have mm -hmm. jobs. Uh, so the parenting, the parenting, my mom was a homemaker. Mm -hmm. Not exactly as uh, hands-on as Paolo's mom, mm -hmm. but he stayed most of the time at home. So whenever you come home, there's always mom there. I don't think uh, the experience is experience now is different. The mom is, you know, working somewhere else, doing other work other than uh, keeping home, right? So uh, I guess I want people to see that you know it was much different then. My mom was just at home, like 24-7. She, she did, much like Paolo's mom, she didn't have much friends, you know. She's kind of like uh, detached from um, the outside world. And all she does and all she cares about is keeping, keeping uh, Paolo healthy and, and, and um, you know, uh, like a good kid. So that was that was what I brought into the character, just being like a very nurturing, maybe too <laughs> way too much to, uh, you know, to a fault. But that's how it was during my time, and uh, which the kids now probably do not experience as much. You know, some maybe, but uh, most of the most of the new families I know have moms that are working there. And I really appreciate actually Agat's interpretation of that character because like if you, you know, it, it's a tricky character because you can really interpret that in a very extreme way of just like, you know, strict and just kind of like rigid and just cold. But actually there was a lot of love and, and that's kind of um, when you said nurturing and like she'll do everything to protect her son. It's it's coming from a place of like well intention and you know like and and that's i think that's the essence of a filipino mom is like she's strong and she cares and she's you know devoted to making sure that 
you know, her family is safe and that, you know, she has faith and, you know, a lot of, a lot of the traditional family values are still very prevalent in each, each family and in, in the Philippines and probably even in the Filipino families in the States. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I, even though I was raised by a single mom, I still belong to a very, a large family, you know, I had a large support system with lots and lots of strong women in the family, like my aunties, my grand aunts, you know, and now even like nieces, you know, so, so yeah, I, it's a lot of, it's a strong testament to the, how strong and powerful Filipino women are. <laughs> definitely, definitely true. Definitely, definitely true. Uh, Valerie, I wanted to ask, like, um, I mean, it's a simple question, I guess, but, um, how much of Mima was based off of you? 100%. I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> um, I don't know. I think, um, you know, you know, when you're writing creatively, you, you embellish a little bit. So I, I'm somewhere in the middle, I guess. Um, mm. I definitely am kind of a romantic, but like uh, I kind of bury my feelings. Mm. Um, and so I would, yeah, it's, it's like, to me, the, the film has like three endings, right? So like there's the mm -hmm. boy's ending and then there's her ending. Um, and, and writing the script itself was a process because I didn't want to expose so much of myself. Mm -hmm. Um, just because it was my first, uh, script and, and, you know, like, I didn't know like who's going to watch this and who's going to judge you, you know, you never know. Sure, yeah, you never um, <laughs> so, so yeah, um, I would say, yeah, I'll, 80 percent i don't know i don't know what would i mean um it's funny because it wasn't to the second time i viewed the movie again i was just like i wonder if this is her i wonder if this is her <laughs> <laughs> we can just leave that a mystery yeah, totally. <laughs> Put a pin on that. um now that we talked about the ending of the movie i have to ask um for people who don't know um and uh i got if you have a if you have a son you can answer to and also uh, noel if you've gone through this, you can answer too. Um, let's talk about that ending. What is the significance of circumcision for boys, for, for people who won't understand that, who have seen this movie? Like, cause I'm assuming for everyone here, they probably get it done as a baby and stuff, but why is that at the ending of this film and the significance of it? Like, what, what would you say about it? Yeah. Any um, three of you can answer. <laughs> I'll let so, you guys go first. I think that it was, because it's embedded in the Filipino culture that um, if you're not circumcised, it's like you're kind of lame or something like that. There's a there's a sort of uh, stigma or something like that it, within the the community of the boys or the men that if if you're they call it support if you're not yeah, circumcised yeah. if you're uncircumcised that, that means like there's something about you that's weird or something like that. So um, I guess that was a defining moment with Paolo and his other friends uh, which made them true men true men because uh, uh, that even until now in the Filipino culture that's sort of what defines you to, uh, to become a man if you're circumcised and I think that the reason why they didn't get circumcised early on as well was because they were raised by their moms and most of the time it's really common for Filipino men to be circumcised with their dads so um, I think that you know that it also adds to that factor so yeah being circumcised equals men yeah <laughs> <laughs> oh. I don't have a son, but uh, yeah, yeah, I have uh, I have nephews a lot, and uh, I guess it's really just what Paulo said. It's a rite of passage, right, from uh, boyhood boyhood to being men, and that shows your toughness and your courage that you know you're willing to bear that pain, <laughs> and uh, and uh, you know be in pain for a while and have a cup of whatever uh, just to. Uh, protect that. <laughs> you know, it's it's a Filipino thing. I'm sure. I'm sure in in the states it's much much different or everywhere else. But yeah, it's it's a rite of passage. <laughs> yeah, and I guess for you know more of a symbolic 
our relevance. Uh, yeah, first of all, you know, obviously I'm a girl and it's kind of just a fascinating thing, you know, as a bystander when I was growing up around my brother and his friends that they do go through this rite of passage. And again, as an outsider, you kind of feel like, does that really change you? And, you know, as a, as a wit, she's, she was a witness to this kind of false sense of, you know, painful um, ritual that they have to go through that they, they inherited from traditions and tradi you know, ancient traditions that predates like even predates Hispanic colonialism. Um, this tradition that is not necessarily effective, I guess, if you, if you look at society now. Um, so yeah, so I guess in, from Mimo's perspective, um, the act itself, you know, like it's so visceral, you know, like with it and, and, and you know, it, it involves like a rock and a stick and leaves and you're in nature. Um, so like combining that with the elements of that volcanic eruption, which is like, it's just this force of nature that for forces everybody to like grow up, you know, uh, all the bubbling feelings inside a volcano, you know, explodes and, and, and you don't have a choice. Like you just have to deal with it, you know, and that's what life is. And for these kids, they're faced with the challenge of like, do we grow up? What did we realize? What did we learn? And yeah, it's it's a different answer for each of them, but it's something that everybody in this world has to go through, like the pain, the growing pains of life. So I think I'll end with that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, when I saw that part, um, I legitimately got chills because I would I would hear horror stories when I was younger about how that process would be done. So I was legitimately scared. <laughs> so thankfully, I I went through like the hospital route. So <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, now that we've talked about the ending and the production has finished, uh, what are the um, takeaways now that you guys have from the film now that you guys are completed and now you're into this, like, you know, you're in the festival, like, festival, festival part of, like, the life of the film? Like, what are your takeaways individually now that production has finished? For me, I guess, uh, I hope people see, uh, the, you know, the Filipino family, and, and, and just the dynamics of it, uh, different dynamics and how people grew up during that time and, and, you know, with the circumcision, the traditions and everyone's values and principles. Uh, I don't think it's changed a lot or, you know, we can still go back to, to the film and still apply it. Uh, in the present because pretty much the values and principles of Filipino families still intact, I think. And um, it just shows in the film and hopefully people see that too or, or can actually acknowledge and be aware that, okay, we're still, we're still fine. You know, we're still surviving. We're still thriving, actually. So I hope they take that away from the film too. I think that it's... My main takeaway is that it's really important to have uh, to have a strong bond with your friends, because like uh, if if your family isn't there for you, uh, your friends will always be there for you. And um, that being said, I think that it's that doesn't mean that it's not important to uh, have a strong band, strong bond with your family as well. They're equally important in your life, so uh, I think that it's important to keep a balanced relationship with your family and with your friends. Um, yeah, I guess for me, there you know there are so many takeaways because there are so many things that I just kind of packed into this script, yeah. and so so I think to simplify it, um, I'll just put it in the context of our COVID situation, which is. <laughs> You know, when you are just feeling down and, you know, unsure of the, uncertain of the future, you look to your past and you kind of find some comfort in your memories. Um, and you cherish the friendships and the people you grew up around and you realize, you know, every one of those individuals made help make you into who you are now. And, you know, that's kind of a nice way to look at the past. Um, 
and then you know you bring that with you this kind of sense of gratitude into the future and then you you know you hope for the best you hope you keep growing you hope you can you know face whatever volcanic eruption forest fire <laughs> COVID pandemic is in your way in the future and you just hope that you know some of it, some of those friends may stay and go and even yeah even family members can stay uh stay and go but you know you'll have your sense of self and you'll have your your strong sense self-worth to kind of take you along for the journey that's possibly the best way to put a period in this <laughs> <laughs> That is probably the best way to put a period on this. Um, first, I'd like to thank all of you guys for coming. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. And Valerie and Agat and uh, Noel and the rest of the cast members and cast and crew, thank you so much for this film. I, it, it, it feel, it's not, not, not every day you feel something that takes you back to when you were a young boy. So uh, to me, I could have been any of those boys' shoes. And that, to me, I think that's what really touched me about this. And... I just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for it and for bringing such life to it and just taking me back to, you know, uh, Green Heights Village in Sukat Paranyaki in 1992 and how I left it all behind to move to the U.S. in 94. So it was, it was just, I'm, I'm, that's why, because uh, initially I was a church programmer, but I fought to, like, have this, the, to do the Q&A for this because I just resonated so much for it. So thankfully the VC gods were good enough to let me have it. So... <laughs> Um, but yeah, thank you so much again for joining in this like uh, artist conversation, and um, yeah, uh, hold on, let me see. Ryan, are you there? Ryan. <laughs> oh um, well, I uh, just wanted to say uh, thank you so much again for the cast and crew that are here with us today. Um, thank you so much for staying for the conversation. Um, if you enjoyed this conversation, please. Check out the festival lineup. Please consider making a donation to Visual Communications. And hopefully for you guys, uh, we'll get to see you at the other events during the film festival, like uh, social media events and stuff. And please keep an eye on the schedule. Visit festival.vcmedia.org and follow hashtag LAAPFF2020 on social media. Again, Valerie, Noel, I got, uh, I got Thank you so much. And thank you so much for your wonderful film. I can't say enough good things about it. Thank you. Thank you so much. And if it ever comes out in home video, I was like, we'll get the first coffee soon. So thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.